<laughs> you not woke. Nah. Wakanda, everybody had guns. <laughs> <laughs> and spears and everything else you needed. There were no guns in Wakanda. No, they didn't have guns in Wakanda. They had hand cannons. After garnering criticism, including from me, for that interview on NRA TV, which the NRA posted on the same day of the March for Our Lives rally. Wrong. The video was uploaded on the 22nd of March. The March for Our Lives rally was on the 24th of March. Fast forward a little over a week, and he and I wound up in a little bit of a social media dust-up, which started on Instagram with Mike's comment about this Glam Squad photo, in which I referenced H&M, hair and makeup. Mike responded with a criticism of me purportedly promoting a different H&M, the clothing company that caused an uproar for advertising a coolest monkey in the jungle sweatshirt on a little black boy, not smart, asking why his NRA interview was worse than that. I responded to that and Twitter took it from there. You know how it goes. It's all a misunderstanding. Well, we decided that even social media beef can create an opportunity for dialogue. And there are much bigger issues at stake than my glam pics. And so you're right. There are much bigger issues to dialogue about. Like when I sent you that message on Twitter where I asked to have a reasonable conversation about firearms on this issue after you've disparaged me multiple times. But yet, when you have a glam pic that gets taken out of context, let's have a reasonable dialogue. Rapper Killer Mike is here to discuss those issues. And you know we hooked up your H&M this morning to make you look cute. The bigger picture here was, I think, for both of us, the bigger picture. My criticism of you and the video you did, your criticism of me, really goes back, I think, to the march for our lives. And I, and, and I just want to, just, just for your background, give you some what? background on why I had such a strong reaction to you doing that interview, which, of course, you did before, and then they posted on that day. Once again, the video was posted two days before the march, not on the morning of... Not on the day before, two days before the march. The morning gotcha. that your video was posted, that Coleon Noir is what he calls himself, he's a, as a lawyer. The day that they posted yeah. that video and that you started trending for that, they also posted like a series of tweets at me. So let's do E6 first. Yeah. There was, they posted this series of tweets with him tagged in it or him forwarding them that were really like kind of inflammatory, you know, going after David Hogg, yeah. going after the Reverend Al, talking about rape is a real thing, um, saying they only want to hear from black people agree with them. And so I guess it's in 2018, according to Joanne Reed, rape isn't a real thing anymore. Who the thunk? You see, this is the problem with this so-called conversation that we're supposed to be having on a national scene. Simply contesting someone's notions and ideas is considered inflammatory and attacking. Just because I don't agree with you doesn't mean I am attacking you. It just means I am challenging a position you have on an issue that I have a different position on. That's called discourse. It's called being adults. It's called learning from each other. Stop. Then let's play this video. This is E2 for my reporters. Um, that was the one okay. that really got to me that morning. Take a look. Joy Reid, you can go stick it. We are on to you and we will be watching. Every time you lay out a ridiculous tweet like that, I will be calling you out. You can bet on it. Tell them, please, how you feel about you have to deal with the reality of rape and how you don't want to be disarmed dealing with it. Rape is a real thing. Being mugged is a real thing. I mean, you know, Mike, for me, when an organization that's all about guns starts tweeting out, we're watching you, I take that as a threat, honestly. Maybe it was because they had already done the hourglass thing. But Joanne Reed, nobody's threatening you. We're watching you because you be lying. Just lying. And you make ridiculous points. So we're going to challenge you on each of those points. Stop conflating the fact that the NRA is a gun rights organization with the idea that they're going to hold you accountable to telling the truth with the idea of us somehow, because we advocate for firearms, we're somehow threatening you with violence. Stop. But you know, yes. I'm struck by the fact that the NRA has never been on the side that you just mentioned. I mean, in 1967, well, they supported the Mulford Act, which was Reagan Act, trying absolutely. to disarm the Black absolutely. Panthers. All right, let's talk about the Mulford Act. The Mulford Act passed during a time when the NRA was not politically involved. They were essentially a gun club. They didn't become politically involved in gun rights activism will become a lobbying group until after the Mulford Act. And that was after there was a coup of the leadership who felt that the current leadership wasn't strong enough on gun control. And the Mulford Act applied across the board to everyone. Everybody keeps thinking that the Mulford Act only specifically applied to black people. Yes. Did the Black Panther showing up with guns serve as a catalyst for the Mulford Act passing? Absolutely. But it also applied to everyone across the board. White people were arrested under the Mulford Act. 
So let's stop being disingenuous about the nature and the inherent racism of the NRA by bringing up the Mulford Act while ignoring all of the other times that the NRA has stepped up and helped black people's rights to own firearms. 2008, the Supreme Court ruled that Chicago's 28-year-old ban on handgun ownership was unconstitutional. The case was brought in part by a 76-year-old black man who lived in Morgan Park neighborhood that had been taken over by gangs and drug dealers. The NRA supported and argued on behalf of McDonald, a black man whose gun rights, according to the mainstream media, the NRA is not supposed to care about. Josephine Bird, an elderly black woman, her building was overrun with crime, drugs, and prostitutes. Josephine wanted a gun for protection, but the Wilmington Housing Authority banned their elderly tenants from owning a gun for protection. Did any of the people who claim the NRA doesn't care about minority gun ownership step up and help Ms. Bird? No, but the NRA did. They helped her sue the housing authority where the Delaware Supreme Court ruled in her favor. Ms. Bird was later specially recognized at the NRA membership meeting and was also featured in a national TV ad paid by the NRA that, as you guessed, most of the media ignored. And for argument's sake, let's just say the NRA was racist back in the day. So was the Democratic Party. They were the party of slavery, for Christ's sakes. But yet they were able to transcend that racist past, and now you cape for them like I've never seen before. But apparently you can't do that if the NRA was racist in the past. Oh, no, 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 no. They can't transcend past a racial past that they may or may not have had. But if you're a Democrat, yeah, yeah, sure. Y'all were the party of slavery before. But no, 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 no. They changed. They're no longer like that. Out of here. Um, when uh, Philando Castile, who was a legal, lawful gun owner, was shot dead by a police officer while he's in his car doing the right thing, saying he had that gun, the NRA was they completely silent, including your friend Colin. He never said anything. So I wonder whether or not challenging them on that might, I mean, that was an opportunity to say to them, wait a minute, well, where were you for Philando Castile? See, here's the thing. I actually wrote a 500-word open letter about the Philando shooting. I actually did an NRA video about the Philando shooting. As I watched Philando Castile dying in that car, I watched myself die. And it evoked every emotion in my body. I didn't want to ask questions. I didn't care what happened before the video started recording. All I knew was that I was watching a man struggle for his life and then die in front of his family and the entire world. But somehow you were incapable of finding those things, but you could find my real name and say my middle name, which I haven't heard in years. Seriously, this is the thing I'm talking about. See, in one breath you say, if you can critique what I say and find something, or find a way to twist it or make it seem like I said something wrong, oh, it's the NRA said it. But if I say something that you can't critique and twist, then it's, oh, the NRA didn't say it, only Cohen on the war said it. But in this case, you're saying I didn't say anything at all when the evidence is right there for the picking. But then at the same time, get mad at Killer Mike for coming on my platform, on the NRA platform, and expressing his opinion about firearms, and then trying to get him to come up and retract his statement because you didn't like the fact that he came on the NRA platform. When in reality, you want him to retract your statement because he's somebody who crosses cultural lines, and I had a 45-minute sit-down conversation with him that was real as hell, and you don't like the fact that he's espousing pro-gun sentiment. And you want to silence him because you are anti-gun. Come on, man, stop it. Y'all are so full of shit. I know you probably have seen, where everybody has seen this video of men being, two men being arrested, two black men being arrested simply for being yes, in a Starbucks. Yes, 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 yes. Do, do yes. I mean, what I, my thinking on that is that if either of those two men had, had, had been concealed carry holders and any of those police officers had seen a gun, even though they were being as peaceful as they were, there is a, a yeah. great probability that they would be dead. Do you worry Let that encouraging black people to carry endangers black people's lives? We know that implicit bias is real. You see, loaded questions like this are the type of questions that people like Joanne Reed ask, not because they actually give a damn, but because they're trying to push a narrative. And the narrative is scare black people away from owning guns. Think about the question she just asked. Do you think it's a good thing that he should be espousing the idea of black firearm ownership or black men carrying firearms, considering that these two men in Philadelphia may or may not have been killed because of them carrying a firearm if they actually had one? What? If I were to look at a girl who was just raped and said, well, maybe if you didn't wear that skimpy clothing, you might not have been raped, you would say I was victim blaming, right?
But now in this situation where you have cops doing something they probably shouldn't have been doing in the first place, instead of blaming the cops or asking why the cops are treating these dudes in the way in the manner in which they're treating them, no, you're asking Killer Mike, well, should you be should you be employing black men to carry firearms considering that there are some cops out there who do bad things and may escalate the situation and may kill the black man for carrying a firearm? What? Really? And this is the same woman who's on national television saying that the NRA doesn't care about black firearm ownership. But then this same black woman is on national television trying to tell Killer Mike that he shouldn't be advocating for black men to carry firearms legally. Are y'all not seeing this? Hey guys, real quick before you leave. I'm getting a lot of questions from you all about the merchandise that I wear in my videos, like this hat and the shirt that I have on. All of this stuff can be found online at shop.mrcoleonthewar.com. Dot com. On it, I have a whole host of items like the Pew Pew Life branded hats, shirts, tumblers, and sweatshirts, you name it, along with the hoodies. As well as the AR-15 detail design, I have them in all those products as well, along with the Ammo Sexual brand and my CN logo stuff. So be sure to click the link in this video and order your stuff today. I'm Mr. Coley on the War, and I'm out. On the surface, the Pew Pew Life is homage to our days as children playing cops and robbers when our guns were nothing more than a raised thumb, an outstretched middle and index finger, and the pew pew sounds coming from our cookie crumb covered mouths. However, below the surface, the pew pew life represents a people who take the symbolic and literal representation of gun ownership very seriously. The gun represents a source of protection for ourselves, our families, and the people we love. Guns also provided a sense of enjoyment and fun to our lives, and for this, we make no apologies. Symbolically, the gun is a beacon of freedom and natural rights, because there is no more natural right than the right of self-preservation. One who cannot exercise this right cannot call himself free. This is why we embrace the pew-pew life, because ultimately, it's about the people.